that we'll go over. All right, so let's begin. So for today's lab, we're doing this at week seven assignment, DOS attack. Right? And um, so we're gonna do a DOS attack. We're gonna use Parrot OS, which is going to attack our Windows 10 machine. Okay, so the first thing um, you need to be aware of that you need to check for is that each PC can ping each other because uh, they have to be on the same network to do that. If you're not sure how to check the IP address on Windows, it, um, you open up the command prompt and you type IP. Oops, if you're clicking it. IP config. And it should be on this 192.168.1 network. Okay. And then Parrot in, in Linux, it's IF instead of IP config for interface. And again, if you scroll up, you should be on a 192.168.1 network. That way you know that you're on the same network. Um, this, the Parrot OS ends on 57 and the Windows machine ends at 150. So you should be able, so I should be able to ping the Windows machine from my Linux machine, just like that. Now, originally, when, before I went through this, um, I wasn't able to ping. That's because the firewall was on. And so what you have to do is you need to go in Windows, search for firewall. You can just type firewall here. And you can get Windows Defender Firewall. And you need to shut off the firewall and turn it off. Um, with the firewall on, that's one of the, the ways to mitigate one of these attacks. Okay, so make sure the firewall's off. That is not in the instructions. So, um, but you have to be able to, if you can't ping, because that's actually what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna kind of be flooding the machine with a ping. So uh, you need to be able to ping the other machine for this to be able to work. So make sure you turn off the firewall there for your Windows machine. All right. The, the, let's see here. So if you look at the lab, one of the first things we need to do is we need to open up task manager in windows because we want to see what the effects are in windows with the attack that we are doing. So if you're never, if you're not sure how to open up task manager, you can just right click on the task bar, and open task manager. And then we want to look at the graphs, the live graphs that, that, happen and we want to look at some of the different statistics and output that comes from this right so we have the cpu we have the memory we have our hard disk right we have our two ethernet connections right one should be connected to the internet one should be connected to um, on the same network as parrot os is and if you look at this this is pretty typical um resting cpu you know, um, activity, right? You have a little peak here where I probably opened up task manager where it peaked open. Um, but other than that, things are going pretty well. So if you look at the instructions then on the lab, what we're going to do is we're gonna use a tool called HPing3. And we're gonna use it to flood um, the Windows machine with an ICMP packet. And if you remember from our discussion last week, ICMP is a messaging protocol uh, which Ping uses to um, send packets to uh, machines and to receive messages back from remote host. So this command, um, the one tricky one here, and I put some notes in here, is that this is a one right here. This is kind of, we're gonna do an HP3-1. That's not an L. Sometimes an L and a one can look uh, very similar, but this is a one option. The one 
allows us to do ICMP floods. You can use a two as well, which uses uh, UDP floods. And then you, it's two dashes, then we do floods, and then you put the IP address of the Windows machine. So it's fairly straightforward. So if I go back over here to our parent system, you do need to be root as you do this. So root, um, you can tell here in the command prompt. Let's see here. If you're not in root, you can do su, um, I think you can do sudo dash i. Then you can type the password that you use to log in. And then you can be root. Okay. Um, so you can do, you can just become root if you want. Um, or you can put sudo before. I think here I have you put sudo before. And then it'll prompt you for a password. Either way. Um, if you're already root, then you don't have to put the sudo before the command. So I'm going to do a ping dash one. We're going to flood. And then we need the IP address of our Windows system, right? Which was 192.168.1.150. And you let it run, right? You shouldn't see anything really here in the screen unless you get some type of error. But when you go over to your Windows system, um, you really don't see anything happening here unless you go to this monitoring. Look at what is happening to the CPU now. You get an increase of activity that you see that's happening. And look at it, it starts to really spike sometimes due to this activity that we're doing because we're just bombarding it and flooding it with those ICMP packets. If you look at the Ethernet, Ethernet is really peaking out here because this is a network attack that we're doing and you're getting a lot of activities. Now, this is not enough to be able to shut the system down. However, what if we had 10 machines doing the same attack or 100 machines or 1,000 machines flooding this system um, would be able to easily be able to bring this down. And that's all we're trying to demonstrate here. And so you can see that the activity is increased. I think I have you take a screenshot or explain what's happening here. So you have to be able to explain it. Okay. I have you do it now to stop this. I don't know if this is the instructions uh, is you do a control C and that cancels it in the command line. And when you go back to windows, you can see, look at the CPU automatically drops down and look at our ethernet drops way, way, way down. And it'll actually have to adjust down once this kind of feeds through. All right, so that's, that's the flood attack. Um, I have you do another type of attack as well. Uh, I think a SYN attack. SYN uses um, TCP and tries to build that three-way handshake, kind of exploits that three-way handshake, constantly trying to connect to the other machine, but that actually never completes that connection. Um, here's the command to do that, as instructed in your instructions. I'm gonna show you one other one that you can do. If we do the same command here, and we change this, to a two, this is a UDP attack, right? Remember, there's a difference between UDP and TCP. UDP are type of packets or segments that are used with streaming, like Netflix uses it. We're using UDP right now through Zoom because of streaming video and a type of connection. Um, and that's the, so that's the difference between using a one or a two right there. And you can see really here, this is just as effective as using the ICMP, actually maybe even more. Um, it looks like you're getting a lot more activity here. If you look at the CPU, CPU is at 50%, still not too bad or too, um, you know, too crazy. But like I said, if you have 10 times that hitting this machine, a hundred times or a thousand times hitting this machine, um, this machine can definitely become overloaded.
right? If you distribute this attack over multiple machines. And that is pretty much the activity, guys. That is it. Pretty straightforward, huh? Um, not too complex, really easy to do to overload a machine. These DOS attacks, um, like I said, are pretty easy to do, um, particularly if they're distributed and as you're using them across multiple machines. And that's, that's pretty much the lab, guys. And then I just asked you one or two questions about it. And that's the assignment for the DDoS attack. For your other homework assignments, there's just answering some questions from chapter 11. And then uh, this project here where you're watching a video and you're reporting back on what you've observed from the video and what you learned from it. And then you have the quiz for the week. So um, not too bad. I don't think uh, too heavy of assignment workload this week. And that is all I have for you guys. Um,